This conference will now be recorded. Hi, everybody. This is Kathy Cookman. I'm the AIS Business Director and International Technical Coordinator for AAAM. It's my pleasure to um, provide you with a brief overview about the AIS 15 update course and how this entire situation will work. So when you get into the learning platform, you will find the AIS 15 update course. And within the left side of the column are various areas. Paper icons are items that you should read. Pencil icons are areas where you can actually enter information into the platform. So the first one, AIS 15 Update Course Student Course Book. It says click on the link below to download the update course book. The following items are contained within the attachments and we would like you to complete the dictionary exercises prior to class. If you can enter them into the learning platform, that's great. Otherwise, please have at least enter them into your course book so that we can discuss your answers during the live classroom sessions. So if you click on this little link here at the bottom, you see when I hover over it, it becomes interactive. And when you click on it, it brings up the 34 page student course book. And as you slide down through here, you'll see the beginning syllabus. You'll also see the um, chapters as they are laid out in the dictionary themselves. So it'll start out with the head chapter. There's some terminology review. And then you can see the dictionary um, exercise. There's six items from the head chapter that we want you to try to find the one most appropriate AIS code. Again, if you at least complete them here in your student course book, that's awesome. If you have time and you want to put them into the learning platform, that's also great. All right, so again, please make sure that you come into the items and that you download. You can print out the student course book if you want. Please remember that this is material that you have paid for and is solely for your use. You are not permitted to make copies of it and distribute. All right, um, so this is your, your workbook only. The second item, if you decide that you want to enter in the answers to each one of those um, dictionary exercises, this is the spot you'll go. And you'll notice that it tells you again um, where you should, how you should, sorry, enter in the code. So it's six numbers, a dot, and then the seventh number. You can click on the start button here, which will open up the entire list of dictionary exercises. So again, there's nine chapters that we're gonna be reviewing and there's a total of 46 different injury descriptors. Okay, so again, this is why I'm saying, if you can put them in here, that's awesome, but at least have them completed within your workbook so we can talk about them during class. Once you've finished entering all 46, there's a green button at the bottom of the screen that says submit data or submit the test. And then that way it will save into the learning platform. Next item on the far left side, this is the update course chart worksheet. So all of you have been involved in an AIS course before. And so you remember back when we used to do chart reviews. Well, guess what? We just have one chart that we're going to work on here within the update course. And this is the all familiar worksheet. Again, remember, it's a spreadsheet. They've given you 14 different pages, but you truly only need one because we're only working one chart. Remember how the layout, the first column is telling you the ISS body regions. We have nine chapters in the dictionary, but only six ISS body regions. And that's because the head and neck chapters are combined together along with the cervical spine section. Face is its own. Chest is combined with the thoracic spine. Abdomen is combined with the lumbar spine. You have the upper and lower extremities and then external. This middle column is where you would write your injury description as you find it in the chart. Be as detailed as possible because remember, the more specific that you have your um, injury listing provided, the better your AIS coding opportunities will be. Also remember, we're looking for items that can be substantiated in the chart. We don't have all of the pages of the chart, so we can only base our coding 
on what we have been provided. The column that says AIS code, this is where you're going to write the one most appropriate seven character AIS code. The next column says region's highest AIS. So if you have more than one injury in a particular ISS body region, you want to find the highest one. So we're looking at the post-op value. And in the last column, you're going to square that highest post-op value. And remember, to calculate an injury severity score, you need the three highest squared post-op valued items added together to make your ISS. If you've forgotten how to manually calculate an ISS, don't forget, in the front of the dictionary is instructions on how to calculate an injury severity score. Now, with this document, you can download it in the upper right-hand corner here. You can see there's a little arrow that allows you to download this form, or you can print the form. Okay? Again, this is a worksheet for you. I'm going to back up a little bit come back into the platform, and that was the worksheet. The next item down is actually the chart itself. So this too is a PDF document, and you can click on the link here and download the PDF. If you want to print it out, that's entirely up to you. But again, remember, this is course material. It's for your use only and not for distribution. If you want to print it out and highlight the injuries, that's great. Just know we're going to work the chart together when we're in class. Should you decide to do it early and you want to enter it into the LMS system, the learning management system, here with the pencil icon is where you can do that. The next item is the post test. Now, the post test will not be active and available to you until after the class is concluded on day two. Once the class is concluded, then this will become an active or an interactive area within the platform. This is where you're going to read the injury description. You're going to type the one most appropriate AIS code. Then you're going to save your work. And then um, that will come to um, a final report that I will review to see how well you did. Once all classmates have completed their post test, then I will be able to close out the course. Should somebody not pass, again, remember 70% or better is what's required. Should someone not pass, I will be contacting them to schedule an appointment to have a conversation. If that person um, scores less than 50%, then they will have to retake the entire course. If somebody scores around 60, 69 percent, we'll have a conversation over the phone. If they answer the questions appropriately, that's called remediation, and then I'll be able to pass them through. Just remember that the course won't be closed until everybody has either passed the, the class or we've attempted remediation without success. So it will take sometimes a couple of days just in case somebody doesn't score 70%. But I'm not worried about you not passing. I think if you pay attention, if you look at your materials, you'll do just fine. The next to the last item here on the left-hand side, again, still has a pencil icon, and that means it's interactive. After the course is concluded on day two, this is another area that we will request that you complete. It is a requirement by the ENA. The Emergency Nurses Association uh, is the one who provides us with our continuing education units, and they do require that they have an evaluation for each student. So again, the post-test and the evaluation will become available to you after the second day has concluded. And then last but not least is the syllabus. If you click on that, again, it's interactive here as a PDF. If you open that up, it'll kind of give you an idea of what we're going to discuss during the two-day class. The times listed are central time zone, central time zone. Again, this is subject to change, but it's pretty close to how we're going to cover the various topics. Obviously, if we have a lot of discussion in one particular area, we may have to adjust a little bit on day two, but we're going to try and stay within the time frames that you see listed. Okay. If you need to reach out to me, my uh, email address is at the bottom of the page, as well as my office phone number. 
Again, remember the times are listed in the central time zone. I think that that concludes, let me just go back here one more time. I think that concludes a brief little overview of what each one of these particular items are within the learning platform, how we're gonna utilize those, and then the interactiveness to them. All right, so just hover your mouse over anything that has a, a different color. Um, if you see an underline associated with it, that means that you can click on it and um, download it if that's your preference. All right, well, thank you so much. I look forward to having you in class. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Have a great day.